Hey Grace, this is Mrs. Bottenheimer. I was just grading your math portfolio submission and I am so excited to see these two-step story problems that you are working on for math right now. That is where the meat and potatoes of third grade happens. You are gonna find that these questions really put together all the things that you've been learning so far in math and you get to see how it all works together and the problems look a little bit more like real life problems that we have to do as adults when we are solving things in our everyday lives. I was noticing on the submission that you gave me that you were not able to show me your work very thoroughly and I know it's so sometimes easy like you see it in your head you just know the answer and so you just spit out your answer quickly but I wanted to just kind of show you an example of how I might take one of the problems you solved and show my work a little bit more clearly you are soon going to be taking the I learn because you're in third grade this year and on the I learn you're gonna have a math test and a reading test and for the math Math test you're going to have to show your work as part of your test you'll get credit for having the right answer but then you'll also get credit for showing your work and it can be a little confusing to show your work with math because you can't talk to somebody like I can talk to you right now all you can show them is what you've written down and so I wanted to just give you a couple of strategies about how you could write your work down and you could um, just use that as a way to show what you were thinking. So the story that I story problem that I used was the first one on this worksheet that you gave me. I'm gonna refresh my computer here so I can keep it awake to show to read it to you. So Cassidy bought three packs of crayons and a pack of markers for $13. The markers were four dollars. How much did each pack of crayons cost? So I'm gonna just show you a variety of of, um, strategies to solve this and I don't know which one will be most helpful for you but um, just bear with me here so the first thing I find with story problems is a lot of times kids don't really understand what the question is asking so one way to help you understand what the question is asking is to act out this problem so let's pretend I'm Cassidy and I get to go shopping I'm shopping for some school supplies it's a new semester I want to have you know fresh crayons everybody likes fresh crayons and fresh markers that makes it so much better for me to do my school I like to shop at Target. It's like a dangerous place for me to go into because there's so many cool things there. But I'm gonna go to Target. I'm gonna use this as an excuse for me to shop at Target. So I'm going to Target today and I'm gonna buy for myself crayons and I'm gonna buy myself markers. So it said I need to buy three packs of crayons. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna first bake like a real drawing of crayons. And I'm gonna do it fast because you know, we don't have too much time on the video here. But I'm gonna put on this box here, crayons. And I'm gonna get another box of crayons. And I'm gonna get another box of crayons. And then I also wanna buy a box of markers. So I'm gonna make another box here and I'm gonna buy some markers. So when I leave the store today, I'm gonna end up with four boxes of school supplies. This is so exciting. I'm gonna do some crafts, might make some birthday cards. I'm gonna think about why would I want all these cards or all these um, markers and crayons. When I start thinking this way about the problem, it really helps me understand what this problem is asking me to do. So the problem says that when I buy all of these things here, that my total cost was $13. That's how much it cost to get all these school supplies. The problem told me that my markers here, I knew that my markers here, this cost $4. But when I look at these boxes here of the crayons, I don't know what any of these cost. So I'm putting a question mark there. I know the total though is that $13 to get all of these things. So I also know that because these crayons are all the same, I know that those prices are equal, that each box costs the same amount of money. That's an important piece of information for me to remember so that I know that when I find the value for one of them, it's gonna be the same for every box of crayons. So um, you would start by drawing like real pictures that take a long time. Think about when you started multiplication, you started with an array, it takes a long time to make that array, but it helps you to conceptualize what you're happening. So the first step is to really spend a long time taking these pictures they're drawing these pictures that really show and it's clearly like a box of crayons and it's clearly a box of markers and you definitely know what you're talking about and eventually you kind of move and take a shortcut and instead of drawing these kind of pictures I like to use something called a tape diagram a tape diagram is a, a short easy way to clearly show your thinking okay so I would make a tape diagram as a big rectangle 
And in the rectangle, it shows all the different parts of the things that I am trying to show. So in my um, tape diagram here, I'm going to use the letter, instead of writing out the word crayon, I'm going to abbreviate that with a letter C. That's called a variable. When I abbreviate, it's going to become a number with a letter. And I know that this box of crayons here is the letter C. And I know this box of crayons here is also letter C. And this box of crayons here is letter C. And then I know that I also have a box of markers. But instead of putting M for markers, I don't need a variable for this one because I know how much it costs already. The story problem told me that this box of markers costs $4. So I'm going to put $4 here. The other piece of information that this problem gave me is it told me that total cost. So I know that these boxes of crayons plus this box of markers together equal $14. Oops, $13. Got to go back and look at my problem. I made a mistake. Go back and check. Make sure I knew. Yep, $13 is the total. So this tape diagram right here is kind of an abbreviated picture of what is up here that helps show my work and show what I am thinking. So now I need to figure out how am I going to start solving to know how much these three boxes of crayons cost. Well, I know I have my total $13 and I can take away the cost of the markers and what is left will be the cost for all of the crayons combined. So I'm gonna first do that math problem now. So I'm gonna do $13, I'm gonna move up here, $13. And I'm gonna take away the cost of the markers. The cost of the markers was $4. And that gives me $9. So now another great strategy is to every time you write an equal sign, also write a sentence that explains what that answer means. I was always surprised as a teacher that so many times my students didn't understand what this number $9 in this example, what does that $9 mean? So I'm going to write a sentence that shows me what it is. So $9 is the cost of three boxes of crayons. And when you share these kind of sentences, on your iRead, that's going to get you, or sorry, not iRead, iLearn. iRead's just a reading test. When you share these kind of sentences on your iLearn, when it says to share your thinking and to share your work, that is like the primo, top of the line, best. Like there's different scores you can get with iLearn, and pass plus is the highest you could get. This is pass plus explanation. The just getting you to pass and just getting like the just pass would be this sentence right here, that number sentence, 13 minus 4 equals $9. But this sentence here that says $9 is the cost of three boxes of crayons is where your top of the line um, explanation is. Okay, so I'm not done yet though, because I always want to go back and when I have an answer, go back and look at what the question was in my story problem and see, did I answer that question? Because this question up here asked me, how much did each pack of crayons cost? So I've only solved right now for all three boxes of crayons, and I want to figure out how much one box of crayons um, is going to cost. So if I have $9 in total and I have three boxes of the exact same crayons, I know that it's going to be equal fair share. That's what I call division, fair share. It is a fair share amount for each of the box of crayons. They're each gonna cost the same amount of money. So if I were to make a tape diagram to describe this division problem, I'll use a different color here. We'll use green, that will look a lot different here. So to show a tape diagram now to show my division, I'm gonna say here I have those, I have three boxes of crayons, and the three boxes of crayons is $9. So now I'm gonna make a division problem to solve for what letter C, C stands for crayons, that's my variable again for crayons. So I'm gonna show here $9 divided by one, two, three groups equals, and I know nine divided by three, I know you know nine divided by three, you showed me the answer in your portfolio submission, but you didn't show me how you got that answer, but I, because I know what you're doing, I was able to figure it out. But when you're doing the iLearn, you don't wanna have any guesswork in there, you wanna make sure that the person grading it knows exactly what your thoughts were, and they shouldn't have to do any work at all, they should just be able to read your thoughts and then see how you got your answer. So I know nine divided by three equals three dollars. So now again, I have an equal sign, so I want to go back and write a sentence. What does that $3 mean? So we figured out that $3 is the cost of each of those box of crayons. So I'm going to write one more sentence and say each box of crayons cost 
$3. And then my last step is to go back and check that question that was asked in the story problem to see if that is the answer that I got. So I go back and I look at my question and it says, how much did each box of crayon cost? Each box of crayons cost $3. So those match with each other, so I know that I have solved for the correct thing. These two-step story problems are a lot of work to really understand what's going on in the problem, and then you gotta figure out how to tackle it. What do I solve first? And my experience has been that if you really understand the story problem and really put yourself in it and kind of make it a shopping trip, you're going to Target like I did, and you think about why would I be buying these you know, school supplies, it helps you to really understand how to get started solving your problem and then as you learn to show your work first just like with multiplication where you did the arrays and it took forever to draw your array to solve a multiplication problem draw pictures eventually move to tape diagrams and after the tape diagrams you could even just move to making a number sentence with the variable in it so like for example if I were to change this numbers this tape diagram I did here you might not be able to type that in when you do the I learn so I might have to if I was typing in my work for the I learn I might write here C plus C plus C plus four dollars equals thirteen dollars like I could show that work in the I learn if that makes sense it is a little bit challenging to figure out how to take your work and put it into the computer. But when you take the iLearn, I would recommend you first, like if I had a problem like this on the iLearn, I would first solve it on paper, and then I would figure out after I've solved it on paper, how to get that information that's on my paper into my computer, instead of trying to figure out first, like not the answer and figuring out how to express that information on the computer, because that's like an additional skill. It'd be another skill you could practice at home with your mom prior to taking the iLearn, taking this information that you've written out by hand and figuring out how can I show this with typing on the computer because that's how it will be assessed when you take that I learn. This is one of my favorite things to teach so I'm so excited I got to um, share with you. If I can help anymore or share more examples with different problems, I would love to. This strategy of making these um, like tape diagrams came from a curriculum called Engage New York which is available actually for free online to all educators and parents. Like you can just Google Google, Engage New York, grade three, and there's a whole unit here on these kind of two-step story problems that are fantastic, in my opinion, at helping third graders show their work and solve these more complicated problems. I hope you have an awesome day, Grace. I'll talk with you later. Bye!